Is Austin Eckler the biggest fantasy football winner from 2022? All that and more in this episode of the Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for tuning in. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. I am Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today is Kate Magic. Follow her on Twitter with her new handle at Kate Magic. Kate, week 16, come and gone. Two games left. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Uh, off to the championship in a few leagues. I'm feeling good. But Marcus, I'm feeling really, really good. Um, cause I, I wanted to take a moment and celebrate and wait, victory wait, can lap I set myself. You up? Can I set you yep. up? Because you, you, you called See it. it. So I'm going to let you, uh, give you your flowers. So early in the year, we had a discussion about the top 10 dynasty running backs. And we were talking about, uh, some of the younger guys like Brees Hall and Javante Williams. Remember when Javante Williams was like RB two. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we were talking about a lot of these players and Kate, you said you would take Austin Eckler as a top two or top three dynasty running back. And do you know what? He's going to finish as the RB one this season. Kate, kudos to you. Uh, excellent job going Did forward. I dap right? Yeah, there you go. Going forward, not just this season, but beyond. How do you value Austin Eckler? Because it's clear he's, I mean, even at his age, he's 27. I don't see him slowing down anytime soon. I mean, the beautiful thing about Austin Eckler is that he is extremely productive without getting a ton of work on the ground. Like yes. he, he doesn't even have 200 rush attempts on the season yet. He's at 183. He gets so much work as a receiver that it doesn't really matter. He's so efficient with the touches that he gets. Um, and this has been a relatively bad season for him in terms of efficiency. He scores touchdowns. The beautiful part about Austin Eckler is he takes really good care of himself. Mm. Um, like we, we know he is a, a prime physical specimen. Uh, and I think he knows how to take care of his body for the touches he's getting. Um, I, I think you have to consider, uh, you know, Austin Eckler in the top five until proven otherwise he's on a very good offense with a very good quarterback with very talented offensive weapons around him, you know, scoring opportunities are going to continue to be plenty. Um, and if there aren't scoring opportunities, Marcus, Austin Eckler is good enough to make them. I, I'm not sure what, what is it that would bump Austin Eckler out of the top five in terms of dynasty valuation right now. It, it It's kind of that perfect running back mix when you have a guy who can get it done on the ground, but also get it done as a very, very capable receiver as he continues to age. Uh, it what's not to like, you know, what's funny about Austin Eckler. So he came out in the same year as Christian McCaffrey, 2017 McCaffrey has missed a ton of time because of injuries, right? A ton of time. And he still has 300 more touches in his career than Austin Eckler. Um, so it's not a workload thing. Plus Eckler's now he's going to outscore him three straight years for fantasy football. Um, explain to me why we should have Christian McCaffrey ranked ahead of Austin Eckler in nine leagues. Cause it doesn't make sense. You, you have a stable offense there. As you mentioned, he doesn't need to get the rushing yards. He scores a bunch of touchdowns, 36 touchdowns over the last two years. It's, it's really hard not to absolutely love. Austin Eckler, even going into his age 28 season. It just doesn't feel like we're giving Austin Eckler his due respect. doesn't feel like we ever do. But Marcus, I mean, that seems to be kind of on par. That's what we've seen uh, right now in consensus rankings over on Dynasty League Football. He is RB7 just behind Christian McCaffrey. Um, Brees Hall, uh, who had a just absolutely brutal knee injury. Uh, like his status and and when he returns and what he looks like when he returns totally up in the air um still sits as rb2 i think the same is, is doesn't make sense to me 
that's like almost all based on just draft capital, right? Like Barkley can't stay healthy. Even when he's healthy, he's not as efficient as Eckler. Eckler's tied to a great quarterback and a great offense. But Ka- or Saquon's going to be a free agent. Like there's just so many unknowns there. How there's just no way if it, if you just remove the names and you look at the stats and the age and the production, there's just no way that you should take Barkley over Eckler. Yeah, Marcus, I'm I'm at a loss, but all that tells me is that Austin Eckler probably a buy in Dynasty because I don't know if it's like it, draft capital shouldn't be a thing this late into his career. It um, is. I mean, I, I think you're seeing it with Barkley and McCaffrey, right? Those are two top 10 picks. We still see yeah. those guys being talked about as top Dynasty running backs. Yeah, I mean, it, Austin Eckler, every time he touches the football, good things happen. Yes. Um, and <sighs> he's, like, a good player. We, he's a good player. Good player. Uh, that's all we need to say about Austin Eckler. One of the, the biggest winners from the 2022 season. One of the weirdest winners from this year has got to be uh, K Makers, who we're going to talk about in just a second. But before we do that, I want to let you know that the show is brought to you by the Ultimate Football GM app. I actually downloaded it this weekend, started to play around with it. It's a ton of fun. If you've ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your own football franchise, this is the app for you, and it's definitely a dream come true. You can manage every strategic aspect for your team, play through the season, lead your team to glory. You're responsible for just about everything, hiring the right players or hiring the right coaches and coordinators, trading players, making draft picks, navigating your franchise through free agency, making trades, all that kind of stuff that would come with being a GM. All this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Football GM is completely free and playable offline, so you can play on the go as you want and when you want to. Locked on Dynasty listeners get a 100% free boost to the franchise when using promo code LOCKDOWN in the game store. That is locked on in all caps, to make sure that you check it out to get today to get that 100% free boost to download the game. Just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app store. That is ultimate-gm.com ultimate football GM. Start your dynasty today. Okay. K makers uh, went from tearing his uh, Achilles late in the year, looking awful in the regular season in the playoffs to being benched, playing behind Darrell Henderson, who's not currently on an NFL team, playing behind players like Malcolm Brown, requesting a trade, not getting a trade, to totaling 120 yards and three touchdowns against the Broncos in the fantasy football playoffs. What do we do with Cam Akers going forward? Uh, He's honestly an enigma for me, Marcus. Like, I don't know what to do with Cam Akers in general, but he has been heating up as of late, which is – it it's exciting, right? It's, it's, I'm happy to see his success, uh, over each of the last three games or sorry, each of the last four games, uh, 10 or more carries uh, each of the last two games, averaging over five yards per carry, which Mm -hmm. I think is the bigger indicator, but starting to see some of that efficiency start to come back. I, I'm still a little concerned. Marcus. I'm, I'm not sure whether or not to buy it. It feels like this was a really weird, weird kind of game. I'm not going to expect that the Rams are suddenly a, a team that's going to drop 50 points every week. They've they've had a bizarre season, and I don't see things getting a ton better for this team uh, in the seasons to come. Now, I don't know. I, I, Let, let's yeah. let's build the case for Cam Akers, right? Like, because he there is a lot of things going for him. He's now one year fully removed from the torn Achilles, so it's it wouldn't be surprising to see him start to play better and look healthier now that he's you know just a year removed from that. He's played behind one of the worst offensive lines in football with receivers that are all injured behind multiple backup quarterbacks, and you are starting to see. That production plus, Kate, he's got the second round draft capital. He's going into his final year of his rookie contract next year. And if you look at this Rams depth chart, what running back are you nervous about going forward? I like, there's just a real chance he's the every down back for them in 2023. 
I mean, the only uh, like concern, Marcus, we we had another game this season where he had two uh, two rushing touchdowns. Great. Um, but outside of this week, 16 performance, he had yet to exceed 65 rushing yards in any given game. Um, it felt like there was very much a capped ceiling. He hasn't been overly involved as a receiver at any point. Um Luckily, week 16, week 15, we started to see a, a couple targets go his way. But I, I don't know if that maybe coincides with Baker Mayfield um, and and being willing to target him a little bit. But those were the two games where, um, you know, we finally saw some progress there. But outside of that, outside of those two games, had never exceeded 61 scrimmage yards in a game. Like, yep. Yep. so, yet I... I'm excited to see what we can do. Uh, I'm excited to see what he can do moving forward, but I'm cautiously optimistic because this, uh, this has been a very tenuous situation so far. And I mean, outside of these last two games left a lot to be yeah. desired. We're, we're in wait and see mode, right? Like we've got yes. two games left. He obviously doesn't need to have 120 yards and two touchdowns in each of the last game, but I'd like to see him more importantly, Kate, Hover around that 75% of offensive snaps. Get 17 touches. That will give me some confidence going forward. Uh, just a really quick price check. Dynasty League Football. He is currently being ranked as RB31. Here are a couple running backs go, uh, being ranked ahead of him. You tell me who you'd rather have moving forward. Cam Akers or James Conner? Oof. Cam Akers. Cam Akers or Leonard Fournette or Ricard White. Those guys are RB28 and RB29. Uh, I'll take White, Akers, huh? and then Fournette. Okay. Antonio Gibson. <sighs> Akers, I guess. James Cook. Mm. Yeah. Marcus. I. That's To me, that's the range where it's like, okay, you're – you're getting a little bit younger in James Cook on a little bit better of it. I mean, not a lot, a, a definitely better offense. I think the the one thing that gives James Cook the edge for me is the fact that Devin Singletary will be a free agent yep. in 2023. Yep. The question, I they could very, very easily conceivably bring Devin Singletary back, I think, on a relatively cheap deal. Kind of despite um, that, to be honest. And they they really like him a lot, but imagine if he does not end up coming back. Like the yeah. he's not a running back; they'll sign the franchise tag on. If he gets a decent offer somewhere else, it's possible. It it's possible. And if James Cook is the only running back in town, <sighs> holy right. smokes! One more winner from Sunday, and actually just a winner from the entire season. Uh, you mentioned this one, Jared Goff. Uh, yeah, floor is yours, Kate. I'm actually really excited about Jared Goff. We've seen, uh, it, I think, throughout the season, you know, more upside than we have in virtually any other season he's played. Uh, been a top 12 uh, running back, or sorry, top 12 quarterback in six of 15 games. Not fantastic, but um, it's it's good enough. And I'm here to say that I think that there's probably no better value at the quarterback position, like in a, a two quarterback league or a, you know, a super flex format. I think Jared Goff is a really interesting buy, um, but a top 12 quarterback in 12 of 15 games this, this year, he's a quarterback nine. Um, it has had two performances of 30 or more fantasy points. Now his safety has been at home, but I mean, on the year, ranks seventh in passing yards, sixth in passing touchdowns, um, ninth in terms of of completions, uh, tenth in QBR. Mm -hmm. Like he's having a good season. And Marcus, I think what's more interesting too is that the Lions seem to be willing to commit to Jared Goff, and that he's not necessarily a bridge quarterback. It sounds like he's just their quarterback. Um, there, there's a lot to like here. Yeah. And we haven't even seen him with Jamison Williams on the field yet, and that's only going to help his case from there. Yeah, he's got eight games this year with double-digit touchdowns, which is great. And if you can get your QB2 to give you two touchdowns basically every other week or so, it's perfect. Um, 
I don't see the Lions moving on from him this offseason because there's really no sense to. They're, he's already under contract. He's been a viable quarterback. I wouldn't be surprised if they drafted somebody, one of these super high upside quarterbacks, and basically said, okay, go sit for a year. Jared Goff, you're our starter. Um, but yeah, I think this offseason, go out and trade for Jared Goff. I think there's a lot of, there's a pretty high uh, ceiling. They're in a pretty high floor. So, I'm good. That's that's what I'm loving about Jared Goff is the the floor there. It right now consensus rankings has him as QB 25 on Dynasty League football. Um, I, I think that there's a lot of upside to be had there, and I think that there's I don't, there's not a whole not lot that you shouldn't like, especially with the weapons uh, that are in place there in Detroit. It's a fun offense, Kate. Um, it's really fun, I, Marcus. I, I got a stat for you. Ready? Okay. You're going to love this. Most pa- games this year of 320 or more passing yards. You ready? Patrick Mahomes, number one, with nine. Jared Goff, number two. Yes. With five. I love that. Uh, I love that. Now, it's a pretty big gap between Mahomes and Goff, but if you can get a quarterback that's basically – every few games or so is going to give you 320 plus yards and two touchdowns. You'll live with some of the games that are a little bit rough and you can live with not getting any rushing yards from your quarterback. I think perfect, perfect QB two. Let's talk Kate about some players that maybe uh, saw their value decrease a little bit on Sunday. But before we would do that, we want to let you know that this podcast is brought to you by prize picks. Prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. All you have to do is pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than the prize pick projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Prize picks offers projections on just about any sport that you watch. This includes NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, uh, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, and more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds. It is that easy. They're currently operational in over 30 states and in Canada. Download the Prize Pick app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit 100, Prize Picks will give you 100. If you deposit 50, Prize Picks will give you 50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. All right, Kate, who's one of your biggest losers from uh, the, the week 16 action? I got to got to uh, I guess shout outs, not the right word, but got to got to talk out. about Zonifen Knight. Yeah, I got to talk about yeah. Zonifen Bam yeah. Knight uh, seeing a, a decrease in his carry total in three straight games continues to have virtually no involvement as a receiver. Six carries negative two rushing yards, Marcus, like just brutal and i like this was a a solid showing obviously from the jacksonville jaguars brutal showing for the jets offense but just not maximizing uh you know his his abilities with those touches uh each of the last two weeks averaging just over one yard per carry on uh 19 touches not yeah not great That's a good one. Um, for me, it's Malik Willis, and ah. we, we weren't ranking Malik Willis very high, but I think this game against the Texans it was just another example of how far away he is. Now, he did rush for 43 yards and gave you a touchdown, so he salvaged the day a little bit, but 99 passing yards on 23 attempts, two interceptions, uh, a fumble. Okay, in three of his, He started now three games. He, the number of completions, 6, 5, 14. Here are the passing yards, 55, 80, and 99. He Never so, has he exceeded 100 passing yards. He is so far away from being ready. He, he's so far away. He still doesn't have a t- passing touchdown on the year. He's completing 50% of his passes. There's absolutely, absolutely no way the Titans go into – next year with him as a starter. And even in 2024, you wonder if he'll be ready. So for people that maybe spent a high first round pick on him in super flex leagues and rookie drafts, 
got to be a little nervous. Yeah. Um, we had a, a nice long segment about uh, Malik Willis and how I was buying. Um, hopefully you didn't listen and maybe. Uh, it's, it, I mean, the good news is the price is cheaper. So if you want to go get them, it's cheaper now. than it was <laughs> It's literally ago. never been cheaper. Um, what about DeAndre Swift, who continues actually like this was his highest uh, snap count or uh, snap rate literally mm -hmm. since week one of the 2022 season um, played 37 offensive snaps this week. Uh, but Marcus, not fantastic, had five uh, total targets on the week, just caught one of those for 13 yep. yards, four total rush attempts. This I don't know what to make of this backfield in general, but we've said we like the offense a lot. So I I don't think personally, based on the fact that we're seeing a, uh, a, a nice trend in his snap counts, that we need to be necessarily super worried about DeAndre Swift. I'm still willing to buy, um, same, but same. It, it's not a great look, which is why he's... Uh, this feels like a great time to buy. Yeah, because there was at one point in the year he was RB two on Dynasty League football. He's now slipped to RB eight. Wouldn't be surprised if he falls even a little bit further than that over the off season. But yeah, I think I think that's a great call. All right, that is it for today's show. Thank you for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen. Now make your second listen. The Locked On Sports Today podcast. Peter Bukowski brings you the biggest stories from around the sports world in twenty minutes. Get the analysis and opinions before anyone else with our local and national experts and insiders locked on sports today podcast available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts, all the same places that you would download the locked on dynasty podcast, Kate, you and I back all week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, as Ryan and Matt are on vacation. Kate, I'm thinking tomorrow we, uh, we rank our top 10 dynasty receivers. What do you think? Ooh, Maybe we draft I like them. that. Yeah. I like that. All right. Go follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Majuk. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. Enjoy your Tuesday. We'll see you guys next time.